we grew up almost with this high expectation or almost an arrogance that we know what truth is. The media has to be honest, but it can't keep telling people we're the truth because maybe just a second before you die, God comes and you get the wisdom to suddenly know what truth is. Mm -hmm. Because when journalism reports a story, it is what one reporter at one location with one photographer, what that person happened to see at that time. Maybe what they see is only part of the elephant. Maybe what, who they interviewed isn't telling the truth. Maybe they're not understanding exactly all the elements of it. So we don't know truth. We can be honest. There's a difference between honesty and truth. Truth is something we spend our whole lives seeking. Honesty is when you know that you're telling something that you know is different. So, and right now we're having politicians who lie. I don't condemn politicians for not always telling the truth because they don't know it or they're so biased by their own opinions. You know, what I told you, what I said today in the speech, I don't know if that's truth. I can tell you it's my honest feelings. I'm, I don't believe something else and tell you another thing. So if television news would continue to be honest, to work as hard as you can, as hard as we can, in finding out what really happened and just keep reporting it. That's our weapon. I am betting that truth or honesty wins out. I am betting that honesty wins out. I am betting that these cable news shows that have a bias, make up stories, lie, because it's not just, at least in America, it's not just the politicians who are lying. It is some of the cable news shows that are working with these politicians. The press secretary to Trump just got hired by Fox News. Sarah, mm -hmm. she just got hired. They go right from Trump to Fox News. So that's what's happening. We have to stop lying. But there are going to be people out there putting lies out. But you know, in the end, most people can figure out who's being honest. There'll be some so, people that believe whatever they say, but most people will figure it out. And I think, I pray, I hope, that come next November, you will see a shift in the American public. They'll say... So that takes great courage and trust um, from politicians. Um, and in your own political career, you have uh, uh, had to face um, controversy and difficulty. For instance, um, you resigned publicly. Yes. Um, um, uh, after uh, there was, was it, was, it, was it a case that the, the news was about to break that you had previously, before your political career, visited a prostitute? And, and when you found out that news was going to break, you held a press conference the next morning Mia culpa and yeah. resigned. Is that, the, is that what happened? Uh, close. Uh, I guess I was 27 years old. I went to a uh, massage parlor. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a nice visit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> and, uh, and then I didn't know the news was going to break, but I was starting to get some calls, not right. from reporters. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to spend my life being Running away. blackmailed, yeah. you know? So I just resigned, and they didn't know for the first day why I had resigned. The next day, I held a press conference and said, I this visited a massage parlor, and you know, let me get mm -hmm. my, I probably overplayed it. I mean, now, in light of what's going on in the world, it, but I was young and I didn't have perspective yet. I thought this was life changing. And the next year I ran for off and got elected and then was elected mayor. So, but I did it and I just, but telling 
being honest, that's just something your mom and dad teach you. That I, 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 I'm not a hero because I was honest about what I did. I mean, that's what a normal person would do. You know, normally people don't lie. I mean, really, think about your friends or whatever. Most of the people you're friendly with or whatever, they don't lie. They embellish, you know, stories for entertaining value. But most people are just, you remember what your mom and dad taught you. And, and so it's not, it's not such a, a big deal to do it. We are now shocked because we suddenly have politicians in both countries mm -hmm. and around the world that just lie to the face because they suddenly figured out if you just keep repeating the lie, oh, yeah. enough people will believe it that you can get a small piece of the constituency. But they didn't invent lying. <laughs> Did Hitler never tell a lie? So on the subject of, you mentioned your parents just a moment ago, you were born in uh, Highgate Underground Tube Station in 1944. Um, I have to ask, what, it, it wasn't an air, so what was your mum doing in the tube station? I, <laughs> what? I, was, I think she was waiting for the E-train. No, uh, it was, they were, um, there were shelters. Yeah. And women in their ninth month, uh, okay. Would often just okay. spend yeah. the night there if she thought it was, case. you know, nowadays it just seems absurd. Yeah. But back then there was great fear, and, mm. and um, so every time I see a train go by, I go. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents were uh, Jewish refugees from Germany. Yes. You were born in England. You emigrated to New York when you were five. Yes. How did that, and, your, and many of your family were exterminated in camps? Yes. How has that shaped you, your career, and your attitude to both politics and media? Well, it's the single most uh, significant event in my family's life, because um, we literally had our family wiped out. Mom and dad survived, um, got to England. God bless England. Um, I, it, it was August 13th of 1939 that they got two visas, and it was explained to me, you have this program here in England, who do you think you are? Yep. And the BBC did my story mm -hmm. um, about 10 years ago. And they trace your family's history. So we knew that, you know, I have the faded pictures, I grew up with the faded pictures on the wall of my grandparents, my uncles, aunts, cousins, all of them who had been, ex we knew that they were dead, but we never knew where they went. Mm -hmm. They were taken, and you know you don't send postcards home from the camps, so they never knew. And they died in the 80s, so they never got to know what happened to their parents and brothers and sisters, etc. Uh, but Evelyn and I, my sister and I, they took us on a trip around the world, and we went to all the. We found out exactly. My. Her mother's mom was exterminated in a camp called Helmo, mm -hmm. which was an extermination camp, not a labor camp. But, so that you're only there for 24 hours, and then they put you in a gas van, and on the way to the dumping ground, they... Uh... And so, uh, so that was her story. My dad's mom was exterminated, Theresa Stott. Well, anyway, that's not to bring it all down, but that's what happened. When that happens, nothing else seems that significant. So when I'm kind of laid back and apparently take nothing seriously, it's not that I don't take anything seriously, it's that when I hear a complaint about something, okay. it's like, really, this is, so when people say today, these are the worst of times, mm -hmm. it's, they just didn't live through that. You know, how can anyone who have lived in the 20th century say that what is happening today, I'm not saying what, what today we don't have to look out for, and there's some bad things and there are dangerous things, but, you know, we're not exterminating 20 million people in the old Soviet Union, and we're not killing 6 million Jews in the camps of Germany and Poland and Austria, and et cetera. Um, so we're not even for America compared to how America was ripped during the 60s with civil rights in Vietnam, we were burning uh, 
you know, burning our cities down and 58,000 Americans were being killed in Vietnam for a war that groped for justification and never found any, and all the poor Vietnamese people who were killed in these wars. Um, you know, today we're having a political argument, but it's hardly at the level yet. Mm -hmm. So we need to have some perspective, then we won't panic. I think case we're going for to, optimism. Yeah, I think we're going to survive Trumpism or whatever, you know, mm. and, but we need to be on the lookout. But perspective, that's what the Holocaust gave me.